What if I told you the United States military has been hiding fighter jet technology so advanced, it makes everything currently flying look obsolete? Technology that wasn't supposed to be revealed until 2030. But leaked documents and insider reports have just exposed it all. Welcome to the most classified aviation program in American history. This is the story of how the Pentagon spent billions in secret, developing fighter jets that can think, weapons that move at impossible speeds, and combat systems that blur the line between science fiction and reality. Be why the end of this video, you'll understand why China and Russia are terrified, why the F. 35 is already being considered yesterday's technology, and what the future of air combat actually looks like. This is the truth about America's secret fighter jet revolution in 2025. For over a decade, a program known only by its code name has been operating in the shadows of the American Defense Industrial Complex, NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance. For letters that represent the most ambitious military aviation project since the Manhattan Project, while the public focused on the F-35's development problems and the F-22's retirement debates, Pentagon engineers were designing something entirely different. Not just a new fighter jet, but a complete reimagining of what air superiority means in the 21st century. The budget? Classified. The contractors? Partially classified. The capabilities? Absolutely classified. Until now, recent testimony before Congress, leaked acquisition documents, and statements from Air Force leadership have pulled back the curtain on technologies that sound impossible. But they're not just possible. They're already flying. So what exactly is NG-80? It's not a single aircraft. It's an entire family of systems designed to work together in what the Air Force calls a system of systems approach. AT the core is a manned, sixth generation fighter platform. Think of it as the F 22 successor, but that comparison doesn't do it justice. While the F 22 entered service in 2005 with technology from the 1990s, this new fighter incorporates innovations from the 2020s. The design philosophy has completely changed. The Air Force learned painful lessons from the F 35 program which took decades to develop and cost hundreds of billions of dollars. NGAD uses digital engineering and rapid prototyping. Multiple full-scale demonstrators have already flown in secret. Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall confirmed that the service has already test-flown prototype aircraft, stating these demonstrators have broken records in ways he couldn't publicly discuss. That's Pentagon speak for, we've built something absolutely revolutionary, and we can't tell you the details because our adversaries would panic. The program officially aims to field operational aircraft by the early 2030s, but insider reports suggest accelerated timelines due to growing threats from China's rapidly modernizing air force. Here's what makes NG-80 truly different. Modularity. Unlike previous fighter generations locked into specific configurations for their entire service life, ng fighters use open architecture systems that can be upgraded or replaced as technology advances. Think of it like updating your smartphone. Except the smartphone costs $300 million and carries hypersonic missiles. What makes a 6th generation fighter? We've had 4th gen fighters like the F-16 and F-15, 5th gen like the F-22 and F-35. So what's next? First, extreme stealth beyond anything flying today. We're talking about materials and shapes that make the aircraft nearly invisible not just to radar, but to infrared sensors, visual detection systems, and electromagnetic signatures. The radar cross-section is rumored to be smaller than a marble. Second, unprecedented range. The Pacific Theater drives this requirement. China's expanding military reach means American fighters need to operate across vast ocean distances. ng fighters reportedly have combat ranges exceeding 1,500 miles without refueling, double what current fighters achieve. Third, adaptive cycle engines. These revolutionary power plants can switch between high-thrust mode for combat and high-efficiency mode for cruise, 
delivering both speed and range. General Electric and Pratt & Whitney have both developed working prototypes that demonstrate 25% better fuel efficiency than current engines while producing more thrust, fourth, next-level sensors, and battle space awareness. Imagine having a 360-degree view of everything within 300 miles, instantly processed and prioritized by artificial intelligence. Every aircraft, missile, ship, and ground vehicle automatically identified and tracked. That's not future technology. That's what NGAD delivers today. Fifth, directed energy weapons. Yes, we're talking about lasers. High energy laser systems capable of destroying incoming missiles, drones, or even damaging enemy aircraft at close range. The technology has matured from science fiction to operational capability. And sixth, network-centric warfare integration. NGAD fighters don't operate alone. They command fleets of autonomous drones, share data across all military branches, and leverage space-based sensors and communication systems to create unprecedented situational awareness. This is where things get really interesting and maybe a little scary. The Pentagon has invested billions in artificial intelligence for aerial combat. Not just autopilot systems or basic automation, but true AI capable of making tactical decisions in milliseconds. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program, or CCA, pairs manned fighters with AI-controlled drone wingmen. These aren't crude, remote-controlled aircraft. They're sophisticated autonomous systems capable of independent action within commander-defined parameters. Here's how it works in combat. A human pilot flying an NGAD fighter commands a formation of three to five CCA drones. These drones can scout ahead, draw enemy fire, jam hostile radars, or launch their own weapons. The AI processes sensor data, identifies threats, and recommends actions. The human pilot maintains decision authority but operates at the speed of thought thanks to AI assistance. The Air Force has already selected companies to build CCA prototypes. General Atomics, Endural, and others are developing different variants optimized for specific missions. Air superiority, strike, electronic warfare, and reconnaissance. But here's the controversial part. How much autonomy is too much? The current policy requires humans to make final decisions on weapons employment. But in high-speed combat against hypersonic missiles and AI-enabled enemy systems, will humans be fast enough? The Pentagon insists humans will remain in the loop. Critics worry we're building systems that will inevitably lead to fully autonomous warfare. Either way, AI is fundamentally changing air combat, and America is racing to maintain its advantage before China achieves parity. Speed kills, and nothing moves faster than hypersonic weapons. Hypersonic missiles travel at speeds exceeding Mach 5, five times the speed of sound. At those velocities, Traditional air defense systems have almost no time to react. By the time radar detects the incoming threat, the missile has already hit its target that NGAD fighters are being designed from the ground up to carry and employ hypersonic weapons. This represents a massive strategic advantage. Current fighters struggle to integrate these weapons because they're too large, too heavy, or create too much aerodynamic interference. The AGM, 183RW, or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, is one example. This hypersonic missile can strike targets over 1,000 miles away in minutes. NGAD's weapons bays are specifically sized to accommodate these and future hypersonic systems. But it's not just about carrying the weapons. It's about the kill chain, detecting targets, calculating intercept trajectories, launching at precisely the right moment, and guiding weapons to impact. All of this happens at speeds where human reaction time is insufficient. That's why AI integration is critical. China and Russia are also developing hypersonic weapons. China's DF-17 and Russia's Kinshul have demonstrated operational capability. The race is on to field both offensive hypersonic weapons and defenses against them and GAD's advanced sensors and AI processing 
give it the potential to detect and track hypersonic threats earlier than current systems. Some analysts speculate NGAD might even carry defensive hypersonic interceptors, though this remains unconfirmed that what's certain is that hypersonic weapons are changing the calculus of air warfare and America's next generation fighters are being built to dominate in this new era. Lasers. Yes, actual laser weapons on fighter jets. This isn't science fiction anymore. For decades, directed energy weapons remained in the research phase because they required too much power and were too large for practical use. But breakthroughs in solid state laser technology, compact power generation, and thermal management have made them viable. Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and other defense contractors have developed high-energy laser systems compact enough for aircraft installation. These systems can deliver tens to hundreds of kilowatts of concentrated energy on target. What can you do with an aircraft-mounted laser? Several things. First, missile defense. Lasers can engage incoming missiles at the speed of light, literally. No warning, no evasion just instant interception. This is particularly effective against heat-seeking missiles or slower-moving threats. Second, drone defense. Hostile drones have become one of the most pervasive threats in modern warfare. Traditional missiles are overkill and expensive. A laser provides unlimited magazine depth as long as you have electrical power. Third, sensor disruption. Even lower power lasers can temporarily blind or permanently damage enemy optical sensors, cameras, and targeting systems. Fourth, soft kill electronic warfare. Directed energy can disrupt or destroy electronic components without kinetic damage. The challenge has been power generation. Fighter jets have limited electrical capacity, and lasers demand enormous amounts of energy. But the new adaptive cycle engines being developed for NGAD generate significantly more electrical power than current engines, specifically to support directed energy weapons and advanced electronic warfare systems. The Air Force Research Laboratory has stated that operational laser weapons on fighters are not a question of if, but when. And based on the timeline of NGAD fielding, that when appears to be the early 2030s. Why does all of this matter? Because air superiority is the foundation of American military power. Without control of the skies, everything else fails. China has made no secret of its intention to challenge American dominance in the Pacific. The People's Liberation Army Air Force has rapidly modernized with the J-20 stealth fighter, advanced surface-to-air missiles, and increasingly sophisticated electronic warfare capabilities. Russia, despite economic struggles, continues developing advanced fighters like the Su-57 and hypersonic weapons that threaten American assets. The comfortable air superiority America enjoyed since Desert Storm is no longer guaranteed. The technology gap has narrowed. That's why NGAD is essential, but there's a financial reality. Each NGAD fighter is projected to cost upwards of $300 million, potentially more. That's roughly three times the cost of an F-35, with the Air Force needing hundreds of aircraft to replace aging F-22s and complement F-35s. We're looking at acquisition costs potentially exceeding $200 billion. Congress is already questioning whether the military can afford such expensive aircraft. Some lawmakers advocate for larger numbers of cheaper fighters rather than smaller fleets of exquisite platforms. The Air Force argues that quality matters more than quantity in modern warfare. A smaller fleet of highly capable fighters supported by inexpensive autonomous drones might be more effective than large numbers of less capable aircraft. This debate echoes historical arguments. Before World War II, some advocated for thousands of cheap fighters. But technology proved decisive. In Vietnam, the quality versus quantity debate emerged again. And here we are decades later, still wrestling with the same fundamental question that what's different now is the pace of technological change. Waiting 20 years to develop a new fighter, like the F-22 or F-35 programs, 
means the aircraft is obsolete before it even enters service. Digital engineering and rapid prototyping promise to reduce development timelines, but it remains unproven at this scale. So what does air combat look like in 2040? Based on NGAD and related programs, we can make some educated predictions. First, manned and unmanned aircraft will operate as integrated teams. Human pilots will command multiple AI-controlled drones, multiplying combat power without proportionally increasing risk to human life. Second, stealth will remain important but won't be the sole focus. Electronic warfare, cyber capabilities, and directed energy weapons will matter just as much as physical stealth characteristics. Third, space and cyber domains will be fully integrated with air operations. Satellites will provide targeting data, communications, and early warning. Cyber operations will disrupt enemy networks before kinetic weapons ever launch. Fourth, the speed of combat will increase dramatically. Hypersonic weapons, AI decision-making, and network-centric warfare compress engagement timelines from minutes to seconds. Fifth, traditional distinctions between offense and defense will blur. The same aircraft might simultaneously conduct strike missions, air superiority operations, electronic warfare, and reconnaissance. Sixth, maintenance and sustainability will become even more critical. Advanced fighters require sophisticated logistics. Operating in contested environments across the vast Pacific demands robust supply chains and forward basing. And finally, international partnerships will shape air power. America's allies and partners will need compatible systems to operate effectively in coalition warfare. The F-35 demonstrated this with multinational participation. NGAD will likely follow a similar model, though the most sensitive technologies will remain exclusively American. The future of air combat is arriving faster than most people realize. And the secret fighter jet technologies being revealed in 2025 are just the beginning. The United States military has spent years and billions of dollars developing fighter jet technology that pushes the boundaries of what's possible. NGAD represents not just a new aircraft, but a fundamental transformation in how America projects power from the air, from artificial intelligence and autonomous drones to hypersonic weapons and directed energy systems. These technologies will shape warfare for the next 50 years. They're no longer science fiction. They're flying right now in classified test programs. The question isn't whether these capabilities will arrive. It's whether America can field them fast enough to maintain its edge against rapidly advancing adversaries. The race for air dominance has entered a new phase, and the stakes have never been higher. What do you think? Are autonomous AI fighters the future or a dangerous risk? Should we prioritize expensive cutting-edge technology or larger numbers of cheaper aircraft? Share your thoughts in the comments below that if you found this deep dive valuable, Please like this video and subscribe for more cutting-edge military technology analysis. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next investigation into classified programs shaping the future of warfare. This has been the untold story of America's secret fighter jet revolution. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.